Hey, how's it going? It's Craig. I'm out in the garage and today we're going to have a look at something a little bit retro. Let's take a look. Okay, so a Game Boy printer. I bought this at a games fair a couple of months back in October. Uh, my wife and I went away on a weekend away and we popped into a Game and Comic Con and this was for sale on one of the resellers there. Um, I spoke to them online beforehand and after as well and they were selling all a range of amazing games and things but this one I wanted to pick up off them for a decent price because it um, the fault on it um, I don't know whether it's actually totally faulty but I'm guessing so just from the battery corrosion inside there it's not going to be the best connections on it so I'm not even going to throw any batteries in this to test it I'm going to just literally strip it down give it a good clean out and then we'll test it the paper inside of these is focus sensitive so um, after a while the sun gets to it a bit like the receipts you get off a credit card so that's not going to be good it, if anything we'll take a couple of layers off and see if the lower layers print anything um, and generally this needs a bit of a clean up it's it's not grubby and dirty it's just usual Game Boy discoloration so um, I'm not going to retro bright it or bleach it at the moment because it's winter and it's tipping down with rain so I'm going to try and get it up and running first of all and then maybe in a couple of weeks time if we've got some nice weather I'll drop some bleach on this and then put it in a bag and stick it out for the sun to see if we can get the colours back on it. Okay so let's take a look, see how we get on. Okay, so we've taken this apart and bad news so far. So the, look at the state on this down here. I'm gonna try and get a cotton bud just to see if this is loose. No, that's all dried in. So there's something on this and it looks pretty disgusting and it's leaked everywhere. I don't know whether the capacitor's gone or whether that's just from the batteries. Um, I'm still going to take it apart. I'll take all these out now, take these couple of screws out just to free this motherboard out and then we'll have a look at cleaning all the terminals but we're going to have to really give this a good clean as well. Hopefully that hasn't destroyed anything inside here. Um, I'm not going to get my fingers all in, in, in that but it looks pretty dry. There's, it does look like battery acid more than anything else so I'm going to try and get it out and clean it all up and see if we go at any kind of result once we put batteries in. Let's give it a go. Okay, so we've got the board out and the underside is not as bad. Corrosion on the batteries is still there, obviously on the battery connectors, So, but it's not terrible. You can still see the silver through it. I've seen much worse, um, but the other side of this board, this whole area is looking pretty beaten up and up here is not too great either. I don't know what that is on this board, but we're going to try and clean it up. Like, and we also need to pop these out now, so I'm going to pop these out with a screwdriver shortly so they just a little clip on the inside here so once we release that we can push those metal bits out and we'll get all these soaking in some IPA to see what they're gonna come up like okay let's crack on
Okay, so let's give this board a clean, see if we can get anything off this. So this is 99% alcohol, and we're 99.9%, .9 pretty much pure alcohol, isn't it? Uh, I'm gonna give it a bit of a soak and see if we can get anything to come off of this. I'm not sure whether the caps ever go on these. I've never, never owned one of these before, so I never had to clean one up, never had to run it. Um, so this is a first for me. So if you have seen anything before and you know the caps go on these, let me know. Um, if you've seen this kind of corrosion before, please comment down below because I haven't got a clue what it's from. I'm guessing it's battery acid, but um, it's coming off a little bit green, so that could be the battery acid, greeny blue. Okay, not much coming off of that at all. I'm gonna drab a load of IPA inside of this, see if that helps it at all. Again, we don't know whether we've got any issues with this, we're just cleaning up at the moment. And the same in the connector. Give it all a bit of a wash. Okay, so hands are all washed up. I've given this all time to dry, so everything's getting a bit drier now. So we haven't got IPA all over our hands. One important thing, we're working with battery acid and IPA. If you don't wash your hands regularly or wear gloves, then you're gonna end up with really sore hands. If you've got any kind of little cuts or anything on your hands, you're gonna get burnt as well. So keep that in mind. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just make sure, dab all this off, anything else that's left on here now. It's all nice and clean. I've scrubbed it all with a, a toothbrush an IPA and everything's looking good. So next thing to do is start to uh, reassemble this. So at the moment, uh, everything's looking nice and clean. I haven't cleaned inside the print head because I didn't want to do any damage to the thermal on it with the IPA. But what I'm gonna do is rebuild this, pop it back together, and then we're gonna get the battery terminals in, rebuild it and see where we go. Cool. Okay, so that's the battery uh, terminals all installed, all looking good. Looking a lot cleaner. There's still a little bit of a blue tint on some of them. So when I do take it back apart to um, retro bright it in, the, in a couple of weeks time, then maybe I'll have another look at those and give them another clean. Uh, maybe let them soak for a little bit longer the next time. Um, but what I want to do is make sure this is working before I do any more work on it um, and clean it up anymore. So let's pop some batteries in and see how we get on. Okay, so currently power off. Will it power on? Oh, so we powered on and then straight back off. Ah, oh, there we go. Wah! Amazing. I don't know what's going on. Whether that's normal, whether it's trying to feed the paper through. I'm not staring off a second. Okay, so I've never powered one of these on before, so I don't know whether it's going to immediately try and start feeding the paper through. Um, hopefully, that's not stuck down that feed button. That should be the only time when it's feeding paper through all the time. But we've got power, which is good. A 
don't know what that is, why it's making such a noise. Um, what I'm going to do now is try and feed. This is the paper that came with it. So this came with the, the printer itself, as you can see, it's faded and it's old, but let's give it a go. Let's try and feed something into it, just so we've got some paper in there. I'm going to wind it up a little bit tighter first of all. Whether that make any difference, I'm not sure. I think I'm just going around the circle here. No, it's getting tired. Okay, so it's gone a little bit crazy. I have no idea why. It's just the motor's running constantly. Um, I wonder whether this feed button is stuck down or whether there's something issue with that. So I'm going to pop it back open. I'm glad I only put those two tri, uh, tri wings in now. Not that they're hard to take out, but it's just an extra thing, isn't it? Okay, so I managed to get that through by taking the casing off and pushing it through, but it still doesn't look right. This is just going to... Well, it's printing something. I don't know whether you can see that. So when I switch it on the first time, the printhead does its line across. And you can see that each time I switch it on and off, it's doing a couple of lines, a couple of dots, a picture of Mario, the word hello, then I can't see what that is, a Game Boy printer, and then a couple of dots and the lines again. So the printhead's working, but I don't know why it's absolutely gone crazy. I'm wondering whether all this is shorted down here now, and this is what the problem is. So all of this corrosion and rubbish down here could have caused a short, and it might be shorting these pins on the on the feed button so the feed buttons just constantly on and feeding the paper through um, the only way that I'll be able to do that is to try and take this off and trace it and get rid of those uh, maybe the the button off here and see what we can do to replace it um, a bit of a mess really isn't it so I'm wondering whether this is repairable I'm guessing it is but let's have a look see what we can do with this first of all what is causing that Ah. Okay, so as soon as I short it, I can temporarily. There we go. So by shorting this button out, I can stop the paper from feeding. As soon as I remove one of these, um, back onto it. So it's set as a default, so the short actually means that it stops and the open state of it means that it keeps going like this so i think this button is gone i think it's this switch but take the rubber out okay so inside of that switch is a little bit grubby but nothing terrible a bit of our oh, good old friend IPA. I'm gonna blast a load of that in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm trying to really clean around this on all the terminals now as well. Okay, let's try it, let's turn it on, see what it does now. No, still, oh, no, it stopped. Aha, so we have stopped. If I short these two now, will it start again? Woo-hoo-hoo, -hoo! results. Okay, so just a bit of a dirty button. 
I should have cleaned that right from the start, what an idiot. What I'm going to do is clean this contact on the bottom of this button as well, because it's obviously got a bit of an issue with it. Um, a bit of IPA on there is never going to do it any damage, so let's get that cleaned out as well. Okay, and now we can feed this back into here. Okay, so we're back in and moment of truth, get the batteries back in as well. Okay, so button is back in, we've cleaned all that out. Moment of truth. Yeah. Perfect, that's what we want. So every time we press the button, we're gonna be able to feed the paper through. And then as soon as we let go, it stops. Awesome, time to rebuild. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is we're powering up this Game Boy with the Game Boy camera plugged in. We've got our link cable as well. So we're gonna link this Game Boy. This has got a backlight and a bivert in it as well. It's one of my favorite ones to play on. I'm gonna connect this up to the printer and then see if we can print something off. Let's give it a go. Okay. So we've got some photos on here from before when I've used this Game Boy camera for the Wi-Fi printer video. Um, if you can see that on there, we've got a picture of two Game Boys up on my shelf with the Nintendo frame and a Game Boy on there. So what we're going to do is we're going to try and print that off. So press A and then up to print and then A to print. Printer error 0 2. Okay, so were we not connected? Is there an issue with it? Let's have a look. Disconnect this and connect it again. Print. Transfer in. Okay, so we're getting somewhere. Transfer in, so the data should be going across to the printer. Is it working? Yes. Awesome, look at that. So we have a Game Boy printer working now. As I said, I didn't think the printer quality was gonna be great on this. Um, but that's the size of your print. So just to give you a bit of context, that's the size of my thumbnail next to the print. Excuse this thumb, I trapped it in a car door a couple of weeks ago and it's still a bit disgusting. Um, but your printing is working, the thermal printing's working, it's not doing that crazy feed anymore. Um, I'm pretty chuffed with that. So. The colour on this, you can see that this Game Boy has been cleaned up previously. This one hasn't, so this needs cleaning up. Um, so that's never been retro brighted actually, it's just been cleaned with soap and water. So when I get a nice sunny day, I'm going to get both of these out, get them all, both retro brighted and get them all nice and cleaned up. Um, but yeah, so far I'm chuffed with that. I'm going to get some new paper because this one's going to be faded. Um, I might run a couple more prints just to see what it works like. Um, yeah, cool. Awesome stuff. Okay, guys, that was pretty good. Um, there's still a lot of corrosion on that main board, but there's, um, it's working. As soon as we got that button cleaned up, everything was sorted and it stopped doing that feeding constantly. Um, obviously, that was shorting out previously. Um, I've done a couple of test prints. don't know whether you can see that too well on camera, but test prints are working all right. Um, the paper quality isn't great so we knew that was going to be pretty poor because it's been in the sun for so long um, but I'm chuffed the unit's working so now that that's working I'm going to source some paper I've been told that you can get credit card paper I've seen people cutting it down but hopefully you can get something that's around the right size I think this is about 37 38 millimeters wide um, it's pretty thin compared to your typical credit card receipt um, but hopefully I can get some paper for this but so far working bit of kit working bit of hardware I don't think it was going to work if I powered it up with the battery condition as it was and certainly that corrosion onto that um, button was a, a going to be an issue anyway so chuff with that it still needs a bit of a retro button to clean up in the summer but for now that's a good working unit and I'm chuffed to put that on my shelf with other things that I've got on my Game Boy collection so give this video a like give it a thumbs up if you're anything to do with retro if you enjoyed this video in any way give us a comment down below if you've got any suggestions um, and please subscribe to my channel lots of new retro videos on this way 
um, lots of other videos and gadget videos to come as well and yeah hope you've enjoyed catch you soon